Hello everyone, good morning and welcome. Um, for those of you who are attending for the first time, my name is Charity Africa and I am an application engineer in Jubilee Brothers. Um, for today's webinar, we will be discussing generator synchronization using DSE 8610. Daisy will be facilitating this webinar and she will be joining today. Um, as a general overview, uh, the following are what will be covered in today's webinar. We'll be discussing the 86, DSE 8610 control module, its various controls and their function and its key features. We'll be talking about synchronization, the basics of synchronizing, the criteria for proper synchronization and the importance of meeting those criteria and the synchronizing process and requirements. We'll also talk about the DSE 8610 configuration. And for the Q&A, we'll be answering the questions from the previous session. And if you have other questions, please um, feel free to send an email to me. This will be sharing my email later on. And then you can always drop me an email and then I'll be more than happy to answer those questions. Before we dive in, we need to know why do we synchronize? So we synchronize two or more generators for the following reasons. To save on generator sets fuel consumption, to minimize the maintenance and running costs, especially when there's a widely varying load profile. With sets running in parallel or synchronized together, gen sets can run based on load demand. It could be because of some physical restrictions. There are instances where a large generator set cannot fit inside the room, but going for smaller sets which are synchronized together can be accommodated. And we also synchronize to optimize the system's efficiency. In most applications, loads do not um, remain constant. So, and going for gen set capacity, which is large, and operate it during low load demand will cause the efficiency to drop significantly. So this will also cause genset like loading. And we also synchronize to increase power supply reliability. Having multiple sets running in parallel greatly increases the reliability of the supply. So if a problem occurs in one of the sets, then the remaining can still supply the power. Now that we know why we synchronize and the benefits we get from it, let us now talk about the control module that will make those possible. So the DSE 8610 is a synchronizing auto start load share control module. Um, it can synchronize up to 32 generator sets. Uh, let's take a closer look at the physical module. So this is how a DSE 8610 looks like. Here we have the navigation menu navigation buttons. This can be used to navigate on the different instrumentation pages. This can be used to check the genset parameters on the display. So we have the main status and instrumentation display. This is a four line text based LCD. And this is where the genset parameters are displayed. It also displays the alarms, faults, and errors if there's any. We have the four configurable LEDs. This can be configured by the user to indicate any of the 100 plus different functions. This can be indications, warnings, or shutdowns. We have the stop mode push button. We have the manual mode push button. In manual mode, uh, the uh, this allows the operator to start and stop the genset manually and if required, change the status of the breaker. We have the auto mode push button. Auto mode will allow the generator to operate fully automatically, starting and stopping as required with no user intervention. We have the mute. Um, the start engine push button. This can be used when we are in manual mode. So if this manual mode is activated, then we can only use the start 
um, push button. Also the gen the open generator and the closed generator. So this is the open generator push button and the closed generator push button. We also have the generator unload LED. This signifies that the genset breaker is closed and the generator available LED. So these are the controls of the DSE 8610 and their functions. Let us have a look at how the key features of the module. So the following are some of the key features of the DSE 8610 controller. It, ha it is syn uh, comprehensive synchronizing and load sharing capabilities. It has built-in governor and AVR control. Uh, the DSE net expansion capability. Uh, these DSE net expansion modules are also a product of Tipsy. Suppose you want more than the four LED status indications, then you may be able to expand and add an LED output expansion module to the DSE 8610 controller. It is fully configurable via PC using USB, RS-232, RS-485, and Ethernet communication. It has configurable outputs, volt free contacts, and digital and analog inputs. It has three phase generator sensing and protection. Um, it has generator current and power moni monitoring, kilowatt, KVAR, KVA, power factor, and kilowatt and KVAR overload alarms, reverse power alarms, over current protection and balance load protection, and it can also be integrated to building management systems using Modbus RTU and TCP with dedicated Modbus pages. It has a built-in PLC editor which allows user configurable functions to meet specific application requirements. These and many more features are available, available with DSE 8610. You may download its datasheet from Dipsy website for a complete list. Now that we know the controller, which makes it possible to operate two or more genera generator sets in parallel, um, we need to know what exactly is synchronizing. Synchronizing covers three fundamental operations prior to paralleling the supplies. Synchronizing is achieved by adjusting the voltage, the frequency, and the phase angle. Later, we will have a detailed discussion on how this is achieved. So, we, we, we've, we've known the three, um, three steps for synchronization, and now, we are going to know what are the criteria for proper synchronizing. For two or more supplies to be properly synchronized, five main conditions must be met. Uh, supplies must have the same voltage, same number of phases, same phase angle, same frequency, and same direction of rotation. We've said that those five main uh, criteria or conditions must be met prior to synchronization. But why is it important to meet those criteria? So what will happen if we close the generator breakers without meeting those? So incorrect synchronization under the worst conditions can lead to short circuit, power surges, uh, mechanical stresses, it could be bent shaft, broken coupling disks or electrical stresses. This might result when we close the breaker without meeting the five criteria we've mentioned earlier. So for us to avoid this from happening, we must ensure that we follow the criteria for synchronizing. In the next few slides, we will demonstrate how the voltage, frequency, and phase, ma uh, phase matching is happening. Uh, so here, we have two waveforms, the blue and the red one. Um, suppose we have the blue waveform as the Gen 1. So the Gen 1, which meets the rated voltage and frequency fastest. So Gen 2 will try to match the voltage, frequency, and the phase angle of Gen 1. 
So we can we can observe here that the amplitude of the waveforms of Gen 1 and Gen 2 do not match at all. So let's take a look at how the voltage matching will happen. So this this is he this is how a fully matching voltage waveform should look like. So we can see here that the amplitude of the waveforms are now equal. But here we can observe that the gaps between the waveforms are not uniform. This signifies that the frequency of the waveforms are not the same. So the Gen 2, again, will try to match the frequency of Gen 1. So let's see how, how it is happening. Now we have a fully matching voltage and fully matching frequency. Um, as compared to the earlier, uh, earlier waveforms, we can see now that the gaps between the waveforms are equal. This signifies that the frequency are now matching. The before and before closing the genset breaker and the Gen 2 to operate in parallel with Gen 1, it has to match the phase angle of Gen 1. So let's see how this is achieved. And this is how a fully matching voltage, frequency, and phase angle should look like. We can see here that the two waveforms are almost or they are overlapping. And while those are happening, the voltage and frequency and phase matching is happening, the control module displays a synchroscope. The DSE synchroscope. So here the DSE controller displays the synchroscope to indicate the differences in voltage and frequency. Here we can see that the voltages are already matching and within the acceptable limit, which was preset on the control module. During the frequency matching, this um, frequency will change. And this is how the DSE synchroscope will display if the frequency and the voltage is within the acceptable limit. And um, the, last, the last step, as we've seen earlier, after the voltage and frequency mas matching is the phase angle matching. So the DSE synchroscope displays this, the frequency and the voltage within the acceptable limit, but then notice this black dot. This black dot will move continuously up to this middle part until the phase angles are matching. So let us observe how this is happening. As we've seen, this black dot moves continuously as the waveforms are trying to match the phase angle. And once the phase angles are matching, then the generator controller will display something like this. And with this, the generators, two or more generator sets can operate in parallel. So we have finished the high level explanation of synchronization. Now let's have a more detailed discussion on how synchronization happens. When not in parallel or if gensets are working as a standalone, the AVR controls the generator voltage, the governor controls the engine speed and hence the generator frequency, and phase, e phase angle is adjusted by controlling the generator frequency. In here, these parameters are done by the AVR and the governor independently. But for all those things that we previously discussed to happen, what exactly do we need? So first, we need a governor that can be controlled remotely. So a governor with remote speed control capability, this can be an electronic governor with analog input to control the engine speed, Alternatively, it could be an electric engine ECU, which supports speed control over the engine data link or CAN or via analog control signals. And an AVR that can also be controlled remotely. So AVR with remote voltage adjust capability, this can be an AVR with analog input to control the generator output. So let's take a look 
at how will the governor and the AVR be connected to the DSC 8610? So here, we can see that there are dedicated bins on the DSC 8610 uh, 8610 controller. So analog output pins 37 and 38 are for AVR control and analog output pins 35 and 34 are for the governor control. The inputs of the AVR and the governor must be configured to receive analog input from the controller. This will enable the controller to control the voltage and the frequency of the generators. The module adjusts the analog output voltage based on the settings on the configurations. These settings are configured in configured in the governor AVR interface. Later we'll be we'll be seeing the DSC8610 configuration. So we have the governor AVR interface SW1 and SW2. In the governor AVR interface, we have SW1 and SW2, which are configured to control the voltage input to the governor and the AVR from the control module. SW1 is also known as the center. This sets the voltage produced by the DSE module's analog governor AVR outputs for nominal running condition. SW2 is also known as the range. The SW2 sets the range of adjustment around the center, the SW1. This is to adjust the engine speed or the generator voltage away from nominal conditions. Um, the table on the next slide will show the voltage bias on each SW configurations. So here, for references, for refer reference purposes, the software settings perform the following functions. 0 to 10 for 0 to 5 volts. As we can see, the voltage output are in increments of 0.5 volts. For example, if we set SW1 to 5, this is for the analog governor output. This means that the analog governor output is 2.5 volts DC. This is when the generator is required to run at its nominal speed. Here we have the voltage range for SW2. And just like with the SW1, these are in increments of 0.5. Uh, for example, SW2 is 4 for the analog governor output. This means that the analog governor output is made to change by plus or minus 2.5 volts. This is around the center SW1 to make the engine run at lower or higher speed or to increase or decrease kilowatt load sharing. Um, a speed governor that needs 2.5 volts bias and 0 to 5 range of voltage would be set as follows. The center or SW1 will be set to 5 and the range SW2 will be set to 4. And um, here's the table of SW1 for the AVR and SW2 for the AVR. A voltage regulator that needs 0 volt bias and negative 2.5 to 2.5 volt by uh, voltage adjustment would be set as follows. Um, SW10. SW24. So now that we know where we configured the analog voltage output of the module to control the AVR and the governor, let us discuss let us, let us discuss how the controllers communicate with each other. Here we have the MSC link or the multi-set communications link. This um, is, this is the interconnection cable between all DSE synchronizing controllers. This allows the generator controllers to communicate with each other. So the cable type it should be two core screened and shielded twisted pair. And the recommended cable is Belden 9841 and Belden 9271. The maximum cable length 250 meters when using Belden 9841 or equivalent and 1 to 5 meters when using Belden 9271 or equivalent. And the MSC termination, there must be a 120-ohm um, resistor fitted externally to the first and the last module. And their connection type is DCG. 
Uh, let us see the MSC link in action. So we have here four generator sets, namely Gen 1, which is the priority one, Gen 2, which is the priority two, Gen 3, priority three, Gen 4, priority four. Suppose a start signal is received and Gen 4, Gen 4 started first and reached the rated voltage and frequency the fastest. So Gen 4 will liaise with other controllers, this allows them to decide which set should close first. Um, although we can see here that Gen 1 is priority 1 and Gen 4 is priority 4, um, it will be the first one to close its breaker because um, uh, the, the Gen 4 uh, reach the rated voltage and frequency faster. The Gen 4 will hold this virtual key and the remaining sets will now try, try to synchronize with Gen 4. They will try to match the voltage, frequency, and phase angle, just like what we have seen earlier. And once they have matched those, they can close their breakers and supply power to the common bus. Should the bus sensing suppose the Gen 2? Um, Gen 2 sense that the bus is dead. The Gen 2 cannot, cannot um, close its breaker because it doesn't hold the virtual key. The virtual key is required to close two aided bus and the key is not relinquished until all other breakers have opened. Now that the, now that the generator sets are running in parallel, the DSE module must act to control the active and reactive power. Now, during parallel operation, the governor and AVR are finely tuned to ensure the correct amount of power is supplied to the generator. This control is provided by the DSE controller using the speed or voltage bias signals previously used during the synchronizing process. In active power control, supplying more fuel to the engine keeps the speed the same but increases the engine supply of real power. Supplying less fuel to the engine keeps the speed the same, but decreases the engine supply of real power. And for the AVR reactive power control, supplying more to the alternator excitation field winding keeps the generator output voltage the same, but increases the generator supply of reactive power. And supplying less to the generator so the alternator excitation field winding keeps the generator output voltage the same, but decreases the generator supply of reactive power. Um, load share of active and reactive power is to percentage of full load. For example, if one set is producing 64%, then the other sets in parallel are also providing 64% 64 of their full load. Let us now have a look at the DSE8610 configuration. In this part, we will be discussing the important sections of the configuration related to synchronization. We have here the sync options, the enable synchronizing. This is enabled to allow the module to automatically detect the need to synchronize the persistent output AVR or governor output. This, is config this configures the action to take when transitioning from synchronizing to load sharing. If disabled, analog output resets to the SW setting, the SW1, when the load switch is closed. And when this is enabled, the analog output retains the value achieved during the synchronizing process the governor and AVR interface. So the module interfaces with the governor and the AVR to enable voltage, frequency, and kilowatt control using the analog signal. Um, if the output is reversed, if this is an enabled, then lower voltage, lower analog output voltage equates to higher voltage or higher speed. And if this is disabled, then lower analog output voltage equates to lower voltage and lower speed. Um, we have here three different actions. The adjust to center point, so when the generator switch gear has closed, 
the generator's voltage and frequency are predetermined by the SW1 setting. And the adjust to nominal frequency um, or voltage for, for this case, the, the generator, when the generator switch gear is closed, the generator's voltage and frequency is predetermined by the nominal frequency setting. And if none, but we do not, we do not use none. Um, just for your information, none is when the generator switch gear has closed, the generator sets frequency is or voltage is not controlled by the module. But since we have um, we have given the DSE eight six one zero control over the AVR and the governor, we we do not use this none. Here we have the check sync. Dead bus detection is the dead bus. Dead bus detection is used in two scenarios. If the bus is considered to be dead, controllers communicate over the MSC link, just like what happened earlier, so they can determine which one closest to the dead bus. But if the bus is live, synchronization takes place before the load switch is closed. And upon closing the load switch, uh, upon closing the load switch, the bus must be seen not to be dead a short time later. Uh, the voltage, the voltage below which the bus is assumed to be dead. And the delay, when will the bus voltage be measured after closing the breaker? Here we have the check sync. This is where we will configure the acceptable difference in voltage frequency and phase angle. Just like what we've seen earlier in the DSE synchroscope, there's the acceptable limit where we will see the check on the synchroscope. So this is where we configure that. So low and high frequency, the difference between the two supplies frequency must be between the check sync low and high frequency. And for the voltage, the difference between the two supplies voltages must be equal to or below the check sync um, voltage. For the phase angle, the phase of the two supplies must be equal to or below the check sync um, phase angle. So the those parameters uh, we've discussed earlier that as, that are being considered in the DSE synchroscope is configured here under the check sync um, frequencies and body, frequencies voltages and phase angles. The fail to sync alarm. This is used to detect that the synchronizing process is taking a long time. This occurs when changes in the load are making the set control, making the control difficult due to changes in voltage and frequency. We can set it into electrical tree warning or indication, and it has delayed before the action is performed. The MSC link or multi-set communication link, this allows the generator controllers to communicate with each other. This section allows us to configure the MSC. Here we can configure the MSC failure action. It can be electrical trip, indication, or warning. If configured to have electrical trip, then the breaker is opened immediately and the stopping sequence is initiated. If indication, the set continues to run and no alarm is raised. But this is for internal use only such as in PLC logic or PLC or virtual LEDs. Warning, the set continues to run and the warning alarm is activated. Uh, we can set the minimum modules on the MSC link before too few modules on the link action is activated. And we have here the enable redundant MSC link. So if this is enabled, then MSC, uh, the this, set, this allows the generator controllers to have two MSC link for the sake of redundancy. And here, the disable auto ID allocation. Disable, when, when this is enabled, when this is enabled, the MSC system does not assign the MSC ID. So instead, the DSE module uses the MSC ID that is configured here. But there's a catch if this is enabled and a same MSC ID is configured on two different controllers, then there will be an MSC ID error. So we have to be very careful if we're going to enable this um, auto ID allocation. 
we have to ensure that the MSC ID on the different controllers that we are using are unique with each controller. So here we have the load demand scheme. The starting options, it has four. The continuous, uh, the starting options, this determines how the load demand scheme is operated upon startup. We have four, continuous running load all initially. So upon activation of the load demand scheme, all sets in the system start up and parallel onto the bus. And as load demands, uh, sets go offload and onload. The set continues to run regardless of load levels until requested to stop. The continuous running load as required. So upon activation of the load demand scheme, only one set starts initially. Other sets in the system are only started according to demand. So as load demand sets become offload or unload, this, this set continues to run regardless of load levels and until requested to stop. The start, start all sets initially. Upon activation of the load demand scheme, all sets in the system start up and parallel onto the generator bus. As load demand sets, a slow demand set start or stop. This option is particularly recommended when uh, we have multi-set main standby applications. This is when the load is likely to be greater than the capacity of the single set. And the start sets as load requires. Start sets as load requires. This upon activation of the load demand scheme, only one set will start initially. Other sets in the system are only started according to demand. This option is recommended for mutual standby systems where the load is likely to be less than the capacity of a single set. The balance engine running hours. So if this is um, enabled, this is used in multi-set system so that engine's priority, so we can set the jet set priority, right? So this is used in a multi-set system so that the engine's priority changes according to the amount of usage of the set. For instance, in a, say, two-set system, set gen set one has lag 100 running hours and gen set two has lag only 20 running hours. And we have configured here the under hours. We have configured the running hours to be 75 hours. As set two has lagged 80 hours less than the set one, so 120, so that's 100 minus 20, 80. As set two has lagged 80 hours less than set one, and, and this is greater than what we've configured here on the hours, then set two will be the highest priority set. So set two, which has 20 running hours, will be the highest priority. The calling for calling for less sets. Calling for less sets, the kilowatt load level at which the module decides that the generator is disconnected from the generator bus. Say, for example, we have two sets again. The set one is 50 kilowatt and the set two is 100 kilowatt. Say set one is the priority. Both sets are running on load and the load decreases. We want set two to stop when this would leave 30 kilowatt on set one. So set one has 50 kilowatt, um, is rated 50 kilowatt, and we want set two, which is 100 kilowatt, to stop when we have 30 kilowatt only. So this is 30% of set two. So the setting for less set should be 30%. So this is 30% of the capacity of set two. So set two is 100 kilowatt and we need 30% of that so that the set two will stop and set one will assume the load. So we set it at 30%. And for calling for more sets, the kilowatt load level at which the module calls for additional generators to join the generator bus. Now we have set one, 50 kilowatt gen set running. We want set two to start once the load will be 40 kilowatt and more. So if the load demand is 40 kilowatt now, there will be a start signal or start call signal on the set two. So we set here at 80%. So 80% is 40 kilowatt of the 50 kilowatt, um, 50 kilowatt gen set. So it's like um, looking at it, the calling for less sets will generally be based on the higher 
gen set rating and the calling for more sets is based on the rating of the lower set. Um, but care must be taken when doing the configurations here in calling for less sets and calling for more sets. Because when a lower priority set is larger than the higher priority set, incorrect settings could cause the set to ramp off load, leaving the smaller set with high load levels and call for the next set to start. So this result in sets continuously starting and stopping for the same load level. So it is very important to calculate um, accurately how many percent should be configured here for calling for less sets and calling for more sets. And um, now we will be discussing the questions raised from the previous session. So one of the questions is asked, what is daisy chain? Well, daisy chain is a wiring scheme in which multiple devices are wired together in sequence or in a rig without any intervening device. So here, as we, we, we've said earlier that the controller must be in daisy chain, right? So suppose these are the controllers. These are the daisy chain. And we've also said that there should be a 120 ohm resistor at the first and the last controller. So this is how the this is what the daisy chain looks like. Mm. Where are we selecting generator priority and start time? So, uh, genset priority can be set through the SCADA under generator and multiset. So, here we have the genset priority one. We can set priority one, two, three, or whatever. Um, but start time is not configured, but start delay timer is. The start delay, it can be configured under the timers on the configuration. DSC8610 configuration. Uh, when is active power control and reactive power control happening? So this is based on load demand. If the load demands real power, more power will be channeled into the engine by increasing the fuel intake. On the other hand, more excitation will be channeled into the alternator via the AVR for reactive power. Is it possible to synchronize at least two gensets of dif different brands or from two different manufacturers? Yes, it is possible with the right configuration on the fuel governors and having compatible AVRs, then we can synchronize two gensets of different brands. If we connect two DG sets in synchronization, do we need to configure both DSE 8610 as same settings? Um, synchronizing configurations on the DSE 8610 are generally the same, but will, will vary based on the application and the user intended operation. Also, some genset parameter settings, this is for different genset capacities, have to be configured differently. How do modules decide when to shift the load from one generator to another? So this is through load demand scheme via MSC link. So the DSE8610 controllers communicate with one another using the MSC link. Um, they are passing information and instructions between themselves regarding the amount of power to produce. Um, this information is also used to automatically bring in or drop off other generating sets as load changes using the load demand scheme. When do we have reverse power? So we have uh, we are having reverse power. This is when the genset is drawing power from the common bus instead of supplying power to it. So instead of giving power to the common bus, one set or one or more. So the genset with reverse power will take will take the power instead of give it. So it's like the genset is motorizing or motoring. If I have four generators with DSE8610, which one will be the main controller? So this depends on how the controllers are configured. Uh, as we can, as we've seen earlier, we can set which one is the priority, priority one, two, three, and so on. 
So suppose transit A was configured under the multi set to be priority one, this will be the priority genset, the priority genset. However, um, if the if balance engine running ours is enabled, then this preset priority numbers will be ignored. So this this is always depending on how the controllers are configured. But um, generally speaking, it is based on the priority. Um, this so um, if you have other questions aside from this, from those mentioned here or discussed, um, please feel free to drop me an email. Uh, Daisy will be sharing my email address. You can drop me an email anytime and I'll be more than happy to answer whatever question you have. Thank you very much. So thank you for joining us today. And I hope you are all keeping safe. Have a great day and thanks again.